Hey everyone, welcome back. <laughs> I scared myself. Hey everyone, welcome back to White Skills. You're making me laugh. <laughs> Today we're doing four Dollar Tree farmhouse projects for your home decor. And now, without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> For this project, we're gonna be using a pool noodle, some craft paper, and seven glass votive holders. And I'm just gonna cut my noodle down with a knife to 27 and a half inches, which is just a little bit smaller than the width of the roll of the craft paper. And then I'm gonna wedge in some Jenga pieces using a craft knife. And this will make our logs sit flat, but I do end up adding one more piece a little bit later to keep it sitting upright. So I'm just gonna hot glue those Jenga pieces in and then I'm gonna try and figure out the spacing for the votives, which almost made me blow a brain gasket, but here are the measurements for the middle and then the middle of the two halves and then I just eyeballed the center of those and the two end votives. And these votives you can find usually they're in two or three packs but this time I found them with four votive holders in one pack. So that was a really good deal. So I'm just gonna hollow out those circles and you wanna leave them a little bit smaller than the actual bottoms so that they'll stay snug as a bug in a rug. And then I'll remove them and then we'll move on to the next step. So I took my craft paper and smushed it all up and folded it lengthwise and I was out of Mod Podge, which I just got some from my daughter for my birthday. <laughs> so I used some Elmer's school glue and added a little bit of water to make my own mixture. And then I'm just gonna brush that all over and this is super, super messy, which means it's super, super fun but I'll just wrap my entire noodle and press in those creases and folds so it starts looking like a real log. So then I cut into the paper over the openings and rolled those edges into the holes. And then on the ends, I'm making slits in the paper so that I can hot glue them down in little sections for that clean edge I want. And then I took some cardboard and made rough circles and I was just gonna glue them to the ends, but when I put the hot glue on there in that circular motion, I thought it looked like the rings of a log. So I thought that was a cute little touch and so I just left it. So now I'm going to start the painting and I first filled in the holes with my chalk paint in truffle and I'm using truffle, white, and hazelnut to do the shading. 
And as soon as you get the paint on the surface, all of those creases and that textury goodness just pop. And this was also super fun because there's absolutely no skill required. And I went back and made a few knots in the wood by just making some eye shapes or ovals and just slap some blended shading in there. And I think they really look like knots. So because it was a little top heavy, I added a scrap piece of wood from a pumpkin decor piece I had from Dollar Tree. And I didn't even paint it because it was already brown and black and it doesn't really show, but it gave it some additional standing security. And then I used some Walmart greenery and just started hot gluing it into those spaces and on the ends. And then I'll go back in again and add some small white Dollar Tree flowers, a sweet little buffalo check bow, and my candles, and it's done. And here it is all finished and I think this is so pretty and actually looks really like a log. And don't worry, I'm just using the real candles because I didn't have any battery operated candles. So if you don't want yours to be a fire hazard like mine is, just use those battery operated ones. But I love this so much and I think it would be super pretty for Christmas if you use some Christmas greenery and berries. I just love it. I hope you like it too. For this project, we're going to be using a framed sign, a placemat, a glass jar, battery operated LED lights, and a wooden cross. And so the first thing I'm going to do is pull out the backing from my pretty sign and remove those foam roses. And then I'm going to paint over it with my white chalk paint just so that I don't have any of the pink showing through my placemat. And so I'm just going to give that a couple of coats and then using kind of a dry brush, I'm going to go over the back side of my placemat, which is the lighter side. And I want to make this kind of rough and uneven so that it looks like planks because I thought this kind of had a wood grain look to it. And so then I'm going to also paint my glass jar and I want to give this a super light coat as well. And then I'm going to go back and sand that down once it's dry so that most of it will show through. And then I'm going to also paint my cross completely white. Mm -hmm. 
So then I printed out a little piece of paper that says this little light of mine and I just did this on my word processor and you just want to use cute fonts and then I taped it inside of my jar so that I could copy it and just trace right over those letters. So if you don't have a cutting machine or if you don't like your handwriting or even if you do have good handwriting but sometimes have a hard time spacing things right, this is a really easy way to just kind of fake it and it's still handwritten but you have something to guide you along the way. So I'm using my paint pen from Walmart and I'm just tracing over those letters and then I'll go back and thicken up my downstroke so it looks like a faux calligraphy. So then I cut my placemat down to the width of my frame and then I'm going to cut strips and I'm not measuring it. I want it to be kind of uneven and just look like old planks and then I'm using one side that I've painted and then I'm flipping the other ones over for that darker side. And I'll just hot glue those down and leave a little bit of the spacing from the backboard to show through for some more cuteness. Now I'm gonna replace my backboard into my frame and push those little tabbies down. And then I'll take my jar and I'm gonna measure where the lip of it is, where it goes right into the middle, right at the bottom of the little, I don't know what that is, right where it comes the close, <laughs> I don't know how to explain that. Anyway, I'm gonna mark those spots and then I'm gonna take my drill and make little holes. And then I'll take a nylon zip tie and feed that from the back through the front and then back through the back again and wrap it around the lip of that jar. And then I took some adhesive and some hot glue to stabilize it down towards the bottom and then I'm gonna attach my zip tie in the back and cut off the excess. So now I'm going to take my battery operated LED lights and these are the ones with the copper wire. They're so pretty and I'll just pop a couple of AA batteries in there and you can usually find these during Christmas time and when you do see them I would grab a couple because they're kind of hard to come by at my stores anyway. So I'm just going to unravel it a little bit and then throw it into my jar and then I'm going to take some baby's breath from Walmart. Dollar Tree also carries baby's breath. It's got a darker stem but I like these because they're a little bit lighter and I'm just going to cut those down and then put them into my jar and then I'm going to take this upholstery pin and this is from Dollar Tree and just go around the edges of my cross and then I'm going to take some jute twine and wrap that around the top to cover the hole. So I'm just going to hot glue that to the top left corner at a diagonal and it's done. And here it is all finished and I think this is so pretty. I love the lights shining through. Originally I had planned to do two of these so that they were matching sconces and obviously one was gonna say this little light of mine and the other one was gonna say I'm gonna let it shine. But I ran out of time and that rhymes. <laughs> oh my goodness. But I love it and I hope you like it too. For this DIY, we're going to be using a round wood sign, a drinking glass, a package of mini puffy dot stickers, and the infamous 2021 calendar. And the first thing I'm going to do is get my sticker off, and this guy was a little stubborn, so I had to use my heat gun to get it off, as well as my Cricut spatula. But once it heats up, that glue just kind of lets go, and you can pull it off. And then I'm going to use my sanding sponge to get rid of the rest of that adhesive. So then on the other side, I'm going to use my Cricut spatula to pull off that paper. And sometimes it comes off perfectly, and other times it doesn't. But as long as you go slow and just have a little patience, you can usually get it off pretty well 
well. This time I didn't do a great job because I went a little too deep, but that's okay. So then I'm gonna use my puffy dots and I'm showing you the difference between the larger ones and the smaller ones. So if you're gonna do this project, you will need the smaller ones. So I'm just gonna stick those on all the way around and it did take a little bit of time, but it didn't use the complete package. So after I get them all in place, I'm gonna use my white chalk paint and paint that around the edges. And if you can't find the calendar, I'm showing you an alternative of how to paint it where you have that really chippy look and it's all distressed and weathered looking. This is gonna be the bottom for mine, but I'm just gonna do it where there's some of that brown peeking through along the edges and all over. But I think this is such a pretty finish and I do have another pedestal that I did and I used this painting technique on it and it turns out so pretty. So I'm gonna be using the Honey Bee page and I just wanna give a shout out to the artist that made this calendar. Her name's Jennifer Pugh and I just happened to see it on the bottom of the calendar page but I have never heard of her and I just think her work is so good and we see it everywhere and haven't we all been using these calendars? So shout out to Jennifer for giving all of us crafters this beautiful artwork that she's done for us. So I'm just gonna use my glue mixture that I made earlier and I'm gonna get that down after I cut it out in the circle. And I had originally cut off my banner, but then decided to add it back on there. And so I can just piece that together. And that's the beauty of Mod Podge. And then I just cut out my 100% pure in a circle and added that as well. And then I took my sanding sponge and distressed the edges so that that brown will show through. And then to soften up the image, I took some white chalk paint and just did a super, super dry brush on it. I had a little bit too much paint in one area, but you can just wipe it off and it gives it the same effect. So I'm just gonna do that on top and get that all nicely distressed. And then I'm gonna take my chalk paint in mineral and go around where my beads are, well, my faux beads, I guess, and get those nicely distressed. So now I'm gonna take my Rust-Oleum Camouflage Spray Paint. That's so hard to say. <laughs> and it's in the color Camo Sand. And this is the color that I used on my chandelier in my back patio video. And I got a lot of questions about what color that was because everybody loved it so much. And I'm just gonna spray paint my glass and I end up changing this, but I just thought I would show you cause it was pretty cute too, but I went, well, you'll see. Anyway, so I'm just gonna spray paint this a couple of coats and then I took some white chalk paint and gave that a little bit of a distressing. And I was already iffy at this point with the color, but then I liked it even less with the distressing on there. So I don't know, I just kept going for some reason, but <laughs> I'm gonna attach it to my wood round using my all-purpose cement and some hot glue. And I was really surprised with myself. I got it actually in the middle of my wood round which usually doesn't happen on the first try. <laughs> so I got it on there and then I knew I didn't like it. So I'm gonna end up painting it with my black chalk paint. And I think it totally made all the difference in the world and looks so much better. And it really pulls out the black that's in that graphic. And here it is all finished and I think this turned out so so pretty and it was super super easy too once you know what colors to go with and I'm always looking for risers to give different levels in my home decor you can put a plant on it or I also tried it with some jars so that you could see that pretty graphic down below but I love how this turned out and I hope you like it too For this project, we're using a medium wood drawer, a seven inch glass vase, a Hot Wheels track pack, and a spring wood round. So I'm just gonna get all of my pieces ready to paint by taking off the stickers. And again, I had another stubborn sticker. So I just got off what I could and sanded it down. Most of this will be covered so you won't even see it, 
but I'm gonna put my tracks together using the little tabs that are included and make a circle. And then look what I got for my birthday. It's a cordless staple gun by Milwaukee, and I already have it listed in my Amazon store because somehow I seem to forget to always put them in there and then I get lots of questions. So I'm just gonna staple that to the top of my box and then tap it in where I didn't quite make it push through enough. And then I'm going to unscrew my tag bracket in the front and then start painting it with my white chalk paint. Now I had planned to spray paint this and I would suggest that you do the same because there's lots of nooks and crannies in this. But I went outside and I am completely out of my white spray paint. So I had to revert to my chalk paint. So while I was working, our youngest daughter, Kennedy, who's 21, was doing some crafting of her own. So we were having some mommy-daughter crafting time and she likes to go in my supply area and use some Dollar Tree items to make her own things. And so she started making this miniature little house and I thought it was so cute and she used popsicle sticks for the floors and some wood. I don't even know where I got that wood. She used a cutting board for the base and then one of those sand toys that are out for the summer. And I used one of those on a lantern that I did a long time ago. But look at the finish of the outside and she added the moss. It's like a little fairy house. I don't know. I love it and I hope you like it too. <laughs> So anyway, I painted my wood round and at this point I attach it with my cement and my hot glue because that's what's going to hold our vase. But I should have done my distressing before I added that piece because it makes it a lot easier to get into those nooks and crannies. But do as I say and not as I do. So I'm just going to take some Waverly Wax and Antique and brush that on and then I'll use a wipey to smooth it out and blend it all in. And then I'm gonna go back in to soften it up with my white chalk paint to give it that powdery look. And then I'll reattach my tag holder. And then at the top, I'm gonna wrap it with some jute twine. And then I also added on top some of the wired jute twine that Dollar Tree carries, just to give it a little more security at the top. And then I took some lamb's ear from Walmart and I'm gonna hot glue that in and tuck it right in between my medallion and my box. And then I'll pop a candle in it and it's done. Okay, what do you think? So cool. I like this Latin man. Very cute, huh? Uh huh. What do you think that is? Looks so familiar. What's it look like? Um, it's bouncy. Yeah. Um, Carson, can you guess what it is? I don't know. I'm think. You have one, Carson. Set? Oh, she painted it! <laughs> 
I am so in love with our racetrack lantern, you guys. This is one of my all-time favorites now. And if Kay and Carr had a hard time identifying what it's made from, I don't think anyone will be able to tell. Again, use a battery-operated candle for safety purposes. And let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed everything we made here today. And if you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you're not already, I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button down below and the little bell right next to it so that you'll know when I upload a new video. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope everyone has a blessed day. And remember to always be the light. Bye.